All right, so let's look at how Maple can help us with linear modeling. The situation we have in mind for this video is if we have a set of data, say this data set here, which gives the height and head circumference of nine children in inches. And we want to find an equation for the line that would best match up with these nine points of data. So first of all, we need to be able to enter the data into Maple. And the way we do this is by defining data vectors for each set of values. So we're gonna make a data vector that contains all our height values. Let's call it H. So we type H and then colon equal, our assignment operator. And then we type out the list of height values in order, in square brackets, separated by commas, like so. So that's defined our vector of height values. Then we're gonna make a second data vector for head circumference. Let's call it C. So we type C colon equal, and then in square brackets, separated by commas, we type in all of our head circumference values. So there's our vector of head circumference values. Note that in each data vector, we typed the values in the order they're written. Um, and this is important because when you ask what line best fits this data, it's going to assume that the first value in H goes to the first value in C, and the second value in H goes to the second value in C, and so forth. So now that we've got our data entered into Maple, we're going to draw a scatter plot, which will help us visualize the data. And what a scatter plot does is it just plots H and C together as a set of nine ordered pairs in the Cartesian coordinate system. And the way the scatter plot function works is it's spelled capital S, C A T T E R, capital P, L O T. And it takes a data set for the independent variable, followed by a data set for the dependent variable. To use the scatterplot function, and we probably should have done this before we started defining data vectors, is we have to include the statistics function package. And we do that by just saying with statistics. And that gives us access to all these functions that are listed there. So now let's make a scatterplot, taking H to be our data set for the independent variable and C to be our data set for the dependent variable. And that gives us this nice scatter plot. And we look at it and see where the dots are. And it looks like, yeah, okay, a line may work fairly well to model the relationship between height and head circumference. So once we've made the decision to use a line to try to model this data, we need to know what the equation for the line is that best fits the data set. We do this using the linear fit function. And linear fit, that's capital L, lowercase i-n-e-a-r, capital F, lowercase i-t, it takes as arguments a component set, a set of independent variable values, a set of dependent variable values, and a value for the variable we want to use for the line equation. And there are other options as well. If you want to know more about the linear fit options, you can look them up um, in the help menu in Maple. So that's the form of the linear fit command. So let's do an example. This is also something that's included in the statistics package, so this won't work if you don't have the with statistics command before you try to use it. So do a linear fit. Now the components argument that's going to tell it what sort of terms you want the equation Maple gives you to have. And we want an equation that's actually linear. So we want it to have an x term and a constant term. So the components list is going to be x and 1. That says we want an x term followed by a term without the variable, which is what that 1 signifies. We give it our independent variable list which is h, our dependent variable list, which is c, and the variable we want to use for the equation. We'll just use x. 
Note that the variable you use for the equation should match up with the variable you use in the components list. And see, that returned us an expression that could be used to define a linear function. The coefficients in this expression have an awful lot of digits. It's like 0 0.37338403030 blah 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 and so forth. So maybe we don't need the equation to be that exact and our coefficients can just have four digits. To round all of your coefficients to say four digits, you use the eval f command. You give it the expression whose coefficients you want to round and the number of digits. So we give it our expression we want to round and the number of digits we want to round to four. So the command will work as written, but I just want to remind you that since we just did this linear fit command, so that line is the last thing that Maple executed, we don't have to actually have to type the whole thing in here. We can just type eval percent and the percent references the most recently executed expression, which in this case is this whole line with the long coefficients. And then again, comma, the second argument is the number of digits you want. So now we have that linear expression with the coefficients rounded to four digits. We can use this now for predictions. So let's define a function say c for circumference, c colon equal, what's it going to do? It's going to take x to this best fit line expression. And so now if we want to ask what is our prediction for the head circumference of a child with height 27, we can just evaluate c of 27 and it predicts 17.4088. And just, you know, note that the interpretation of the slope, 0.3734 here, is that for each additional inch of height, a child's head circumference increases by about 0.3734 inches. Of course, if you want to predict a height that will go with a head circumference, you would use the solve command. So say you have a head circumference of 16.5 and you want to estimate the height of a child with that head circumference, well, that 16.5 is our dependent variable. So we're trying to solve our equation C of X for the value 16.5. And if we want to round this off a tad, we do eval F percent four, and that will take the most recently executed expression and round it off so that it has four digits. So we get 24.57. So lastly, what if we want to view our scatter plot and our best fit line on the same equation? And to do that, we define two graphs. So we're going to define a graph. Let's call it L. This is going to be our line. So L is going to be the plot of C of X and we're going to take our x's ranging from 25 to 28 because that's a sensible range given the situation and the data. Okay, now we want to define a graph that is our scatter plot. So we take s for scatter plot equals scatter plot of our h and c. And then we can ask Maple to display both plots in the same grid using plots. And we want to display, and that goes in square brackets, the graph L and the graph S. And there we have our best fit line together with the scatter plot. And visually, I'll buy that line fits that data set pretty well. So that's how you can use Maple to draw scatter plots to find the best fit line for a data set 
and to display the best fit line and the scatter plot simultaneously.